seven games to the Dodgers, who eventually won the series, beating the Tampa Bay Rays in six games. The Braves have won the NL East three straight seasons. The Boston Red Sox have re-signed Eduardo Rodriguez to a one-year deal that is worth up to $8.3 million for next season. Rodriguez opted out of the season last year after testing positive for COVID-19 and having a heart condition because of the virus. In 2019, Rodriguez was 19-6, 3.81 ERA, and 213 strikeouts last year. The left-handed pitcher that has been with the Red Sox since 2015 after being traded from Baltimore as an international free agent pickup from the Orioles. Now it's time to get you caught up with all the action that happened in the NFL in Week 12. Let's get it started. Falcons versus Raiders. The struggling Atlanta Falcons hosted the high-flying Raiders. The Las Vegas Raiders had just taken down or taken their Chiefs, Super Bowl champs, down to the wire on Sunday Night Football. But the Raiders would forget to bring their A game as they'd be blown up by the Falcons, who have now won their last three of their last four games. Las Vegas would score a field goal, but they would trail 16-3 to at the end of the half. To add insult to injury, Las Vegas quarterback Derek Carr would throw an interception that resulted in a pick six for Atlanta. Matt Ryan would throw another touchdown pass this time to Brandon Powell to make it a 36 lead for the Falcons. The last touchdown of the game was an eight-yard rush by running back Ito Smith. The Falcons ended up winning 40-6. to And all of a sudden, the Falcons, who look like they were tanking, are now 4-7. and Matt Ryan would throw for 185 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Ito Smith would rush for 65 yards and 12 carries and add one touchdown. Calvin Ridley at 50 yards receiving and had a score. Derek Carr for the Raiders would struggle as he would throw for 215 yards and one interception. Josh Jacobs had 27 yards through the air, and Hunter Renfro had 73 yards receiving. A showdown in the AFC South happened on Sunday as the Titans traveled to Indy to take on the Colts. The game started out as both would exchange scoring touchdowns. Tennessee jumped out to a 24-14 lead in the first half. The Titans would score again as they had a commanding 35-14 lead at the break. Tennessee's defense came out to play and forced turnover after turnover and multiple punts. The Colts would finally score in the second half thanks to a five-yard touchdown pass from Phillip Rivers to T.Y. Hilton. It was actually T.Y. Hilton's first touchdown of the game. However, just as Indy was gaining momentum, A.J. Brown would score on a 42-yard kickoff return to increase Tennessee's lead. The Colts would turn the ball over on downs, and the Titans would finish the game. They now have the lead in the AFC South at 8-3. Ryan Tannehill threw 221 yards, two touchdowns. Derrick Henry cannot be stopped. He rushed for 178 yards and three scores. A.J. Brown, a nice receiver, had four receptions for 98 yards and scored once. Phillip Rivers, though, had 295 yards and two touchdowns, one interception. Hines rushed for 29 yards, and T.Y. Hilton came back and had 81 yards receiving and one touchdown. The Arizona Cardinals were coming off a tough loss versus the Seahawks. The Pats were coming off a bad loss to the Texans as well. Arizona traveled to Foxborough to take on the Patriots. The Cardinals started off hot with a 10-0 lead, but here come the Pats. James White would score a seven-yard rushing touchdown to trim the lead 10-7. That would be the score going into the half. The Patriots would get a field goal and force an interception from Kyler Murray that would result in a go-ahead touchdown by James White to make it a 17-10 lead for New England. A few possessions later, the Cardinals would tie the game from a Kenyon Drake rushing touchdown. The Cardinals' defense would also get a turnover, but Arizona couldn't take advantage and missed the field goal and gave the Patriots one last opportunity. The Patriots would do just that and get a game-winning 50-yard field goal from Nick Folk. Cam Newton wasn't spectacular, but he did throw for 84 yards and two interceptions. Devin Harris had 47 yards, and Jacoby Myers finished with 52 yards receiving. Kyler Murray threw for 170 yards, one interception. Kenyon Drake had 78 yards rushing, and DeAndre Hopkins had 50, 50, uh, 55 yards receiving. After the game, Cam Newton said he would rather have an ugly loss than a pretty win. The Cleveland Browns, man, they keep on winning ugly. The Jacksonville Jaguars have now lost 10 straight games. But again, don't look now because the Browns are 8-3 and three and are currently in the fifth seed for the playoffs and have a better chance of making it than Baltimore does. That's crazy. The Browns would take an early 17-13 lead at the break, but the Jags were hanging on. To start the second half, Cleveland would fumble, and Jacksonville would take advantage and score a touchdown thanks to a Mike Lennon pass to Tyler Reifert, but would miss the two-point conversion to have the game remain 19-17. The Browns got a field goal to take the lead, and then thanks to a Nick Chubb rushing touchdown, they would have a big lead. Jacksonville would score, but missed the two-point conversion. Cleveland held on to beat Jacksonville 27-25. 
Baker Mayfield threw for 258 yards, two touchdown passes. Nick Chubbs rushed for 144 yards, one touchdown. Jarvis Landry had one of his best games this season with 143 yards through the air and one touchdown. Mike Lenn threw for 235 yards, two touchdowns. Josh Robinson had 128 yards, one touchdown. And Colin Johnson finished with 96 yards receiving and had one touchdown. One of the oddest games in the NFL history happened yesterday in Denver. The Broncos play with the receiver from the practice squad as the quarterback because all their quarterbacks were in the COVID-19 protocol. The quarterback's name was Kendall Hunter. Hunter played quarterback in college, but switched to wide receiver. The game wasn't very close as New Orleans destroyed Denver, naturally. The Saints led the Broncos 17-0 at half. They didn't let up because Latavius Murray would dominate as he would have another rushing touchdown in the second half to increase their 20, to increase their lead to 24-3. The Saints would get one more touchdown to take to defeat the Broncos 31-3. Latavius Murray rushed for 124 yards, two touchdowns. Michael Thomas had 50 yards receiving. Taysom Hill didn't play great, but he did get his second win of his season, and he did have two rushing touchdowns in the game. Kendall Hunter was one of nine for 13 yards and two interceptions. Royce Freeman had 50, 50 yards on the ground, and Noah Fant had the only reception of the game for the Broncos with a 13-yard pass, screen pass. The Buffalo Bills hosted Justin Herbert and the L.A. Chargers. The Bills started off hot and scored a touchdown. The Chargers would fire right back and score their own touchdown to tie the game. Buffalo. However, would take an would take the 14-6 lead and increase it to 17-16 at or 17-6 at the break. Buffalo would score on their first possession of the second half, but the Chargers came roaring back. But Josh Allen would throw an interception. However, on the next play, Justin Herbert would return the favor and throw an interception as well. The Bills would get a field goal and hold on to beat the Chargers 27-17. Josh Allen would throw over 156 57 yards. One touchdown, one interception. Devin Singletary had 11 carries and 82 yards, and Gabriel Davis had 79 yards receiving and scored one touchdown. Justin Herbert threw for 316 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Austin Eckler had 44 yards on the ground and led the team in receiving in 85 yards through the air. The team without a home took on the rival Rams. The San Francisco 49ers traveled cross town to play the L.A. Rams. The first half was pretty slow as the 49ers would control the pace and take a 7-3 lead at the break. In the second half, the Rams didn't help themselves. Jared Goff would throw a pick six that would make it a 14-3 lead for the 49ers. But thanks to Aaron Donald, that would quickly change. He would have a huge strip that ended up being a touchdown for Troy Hill. The 49ers' lead was trimmed from down 17-13. to On the next drive, L.A. scored thanks for the one-yard rush by rookie running back Cam Akers. The 49ers would get a field goal and force a Rams punt. San Francisco drove down the field and got a game-winning Robbie Gold field goal as time expired. The final score, the 49ers hold on to beat the Rams 23-20. Nick Mullins threw for 252 yards, one interception. Raheem Mostert rushed for 43 yards, one touchdown, and Debo Samuel had 133 yards receiving. Jared Goff threw 198 yards, two interceptions. Cam Akers had 84 yards receiving, one touchdown. Robert Woods finished the game with 80 yards on seven receptions. Many Rams fans are are contemplating, is Jared Goff the right guy for this team? And can they win a Super Bowl with the former number one overall pick out of California? The much-anticipated matchup between two Super Bowl champions, Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, happened late Sunday afternoon on CBS. The Chiefs started off hot with a 17-0 lead thanks to Patrick Mahomes throwing for over 200 yards in the first half. Tyreek Hill was killing the Buccaneers. Nobody could stop him from Tampa, but never count out the six-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady. Brady ferociously led a comeback, but it just wasn't good enough. Kansas City would hold on to beat the Buccaneers 27-24. This is Tampa's now third straight loss. People are contemplating, are the Buccaneers just average? Patrick Mahomes, the leading candidate for MVP this season, threw for 462 yards, three touchdowns. Clyde edwards Hilaire had 11 rushes for 37 yards. Tyreek Hill had 13 receptions for 269 yards and three touchdowns. I would say Tyreek Hill had a pretty good game. Brady threw for 345 yards, three touchdowns, but did throw two INTs. Ryan Jones had 66 yards receiving, and Gronk had one of his best games as a Buccaneer with 106 yards through the air. The oldest rivalry in the National Football League took place on Sunday Night Football. The Green Bay Packers 
one of the best teams in the NFC hosted their bitter rival, the Chicago Bears. Because of the injury to Nick Foles, the Chicago Bears were starting fourth-year quarterback Mitchell Trubisky. However, the Bears quickly fell back early and trailed 27-10 at the break. Trubisky struggled, and even though he had three touchdown passes, they were mostly in garbage time. Aaron Rodgers would be pretty much unstoppable as he would throw for not one, not two, not three, but four touchdown passes. They would have a 41-10 lead, but Chicago came back to make it a little bit more respectable. Final score, 41-25. Aaron Jones for the Packers rushed for 90 yards and 17 carries. Robert Tanya, the tight end, had five receptions for 57 yards and one score. David Montgomery, 103 yards rushing. Allen Robinson finished the game with 74 yards receiving and two touchdowns. The Battle of the Birds took place in the city of brotherly love at Financial Field on Monday Night Football. The Eagles, Eagles desperately needed to win versus the Seahawks in order to continue leading or continue still having a chance in the NFC East, which they technically do because that division is so bad. On the other side, the Seahawks also needed to win because they were in a tough NFC West, and if they won, they would take first place in the division since the Rams lost the Niners this week. Not much action, however, happened in the first half. The Seahawks would get a touchdown late in the second half, or late in the first half, thanks to Russell Wilson pass to David Moore. They would score again to make it a 14-0 lead. The Eagles did score before the half ended, but they would miss the extra point. Seattle led Philly 14-6 at the break. In the second half, the Seahawks only needed three field goals to solidify their eighth win of the season. The Eagles did score with 12 seconds left to play on a Hail Mary pass that was tipped to Richard Rodgers. That was Rodgers' second career Hail Mary touchdown pass. The first was when he was in Green Bay back in 2015, when the Packers defeated the Lions on Thursday Night Football. They would get the two-point conversion, but it wasn't good enough. The onside kick didn't work, and Seattle would hold on to beat the Eagles 23-17. Russell Wilson threw for 230 yards, one touchdown. Chris Carson rushed for 41 yards, one touchdown, and DK Metcalf continued beasting and feasting with 176, 177 yards receiving on 10 catches. On the other side, Carson Wentz threw for 215 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Carson Wentz also led the team in rushing with 42 yards. Dallas, Gart, Dallas Goddard led the team in receiving with 75 yards and one score. Most people assume that rookie quarterback Jalen Hurts would play a lot on Monday night for the Eagles, but it didn't happen. He only played in a few snaps, which probably means that the starting job is still Carson Wentz for the foreseeable future.